Hello English learners around the world. Welcome back to the Explicit English channel. In this video, we are going to talk about the relative clauses, both non-restrictive and restrictive. Please keep in mind that English language recognizes different types of relative clauses. For that reason, we have relative clauses with subject relative pronouns. Then, we have relative clauses with object relative pronouns. Then we have relative clauses with WH words such as where and when, and we are not using these to form questions. And we have reduced relative clauses. For the purposes of this video, we are only going to focus on the relative clauses with subject relative pronouns. We will show and explain how we form these in English, how they show different meanings, and how we write them. So let's get on with it and let's go to the next slide. Subject relative pronouns. What are the subject relative pronouns? Subject relative pronouns are the words that refer to the subject mentioned earlier. The ones that we use for our topic right here are who for living things, which for non-living things, and we have that that we can use for both living and non-living things and we'll later explain when we use that for both so you may ask yourself how is this important how is this subject relative pronoun important for our restrictive and non-restrictive clauses well it's very important because this relative pronoun who which or that depending on which one you're going to use becomes your new subject of the relative clause you're trying to make. If you guys can quickly just recall, a clause is a grammatical unit that has a subject and a verb. So this who, which, or that will become our new subject of our clause that will refer back to the original subject that we're trying to modify. I hope this is clear. So let's move on to the next slide and give some examples. Subject restrictive relative clause provides essential information about the noun it modifies. So let's look at this example. The basketball fans waited in line for two hours to meet the players. So this is a complete sentence. But this word basketball fans is my subject and I would like to restrict this subject to the certain fans. So how do I do that? Well, I'm going to insert embed my subject restrictive relative clause here add essential information to the sentence and make a subject restrictive relative clause so after i thought about it for a little bit i came up with this who were watching the game so now we have this embedded version the basketball fans who were watching the game waited in line for two hours to meet the players so now you can ask yourself how is this restrictive well, it's restrictive because I'm only restricting or limiting the basketball fans watching the game. They were the ones who waited in line for two hours to meet the players. So imagine there are so many other basketball fans out there, but I'm only limiting myself to the ones who actually watched the game. They were the ones who waited in line for two hours to meet the players. And this is how I get my subject restrictive relative clause. So who here becomes my new subject in this relative restrictive clause? And this who refers back to my original subject, the basketball fans. Therefore, we have to insert it right here, right after our subject. So we know that it modifies this subject right here. Sometimes students will make this kind of mistake when they try to transfer to their native language. They would say the basketball fans who they were watching the game waited in line for two hours to meet the players. Some languages allow for this type of cross-linguistic transition. However, in English, we cannot use two subjects next to each other. We said who will represent our subject in this relative clause now we don't need extra subject it, it would be very confusing therefore we are not going to include this personal pronoun they 
here. So let's look at more examples regarding the subject restrictive relative clause. You have to bear in mind that information identifying your subject is essential, is restricting your subject to whatever information you're trying to introduce. So in this first example, we have people that exercise take care of their health. People is our subject, that's our noun, that's the noun we're trying to modify, and the word that becomes your new subject in the restrictive relative clause. It refers back to the people. Now you may wonder why I didn't put the word who. Well, I wanted to let you know, as I said earlier in one of the slides, that we can sometimes use who relative pronoun and that for both people and things. This is one of the scenarios when that rule applies. You can only use that in restrictive relative clause. You cannot use it in non-restrictive. So here, because this is our restrictive relative clause, we are restricting the only people who exercise, or only people that exercise, both are grammatically correct. They take care of their health. So that's the only restrictive relative clause I want you guys to know that people that exercise take care of their health. Out of all people, they're out there, only those who exercise, they take care of their health. Now, let's take a look at the second example we have here. People which exercise take care of their health. Clearly, you can see that the word which should not belong here. Which can never be used for living things. It can only be used for objects. Let's move on. The second rule you have to keep in mind regarding this restricted relative clause is that the verb in the relative clause agrees with the noun that the relative pronoun, who, which, or that, modifies. So let's look at these two examples. Global warming is something that affects the environment. So global warming is our subject. The whole thing is our subject. Now that becomes a new subject in this restrictive relative clause, and this that refers back to the word global warming. And this is correct. Global warming is something that affects the environment. Well, clearly, you here see that the word affect is used only for plural, and global warming is singular. Thus, in first example, we use this marker S to show third person singular, and here this can only be used for a plural, and the word affect, in this case, is wrong. And with this, we complete our subject restrictive relative clause analysis. Now let's talk about non-restrictive subject relative clause. How are they different? Non-restrictive relative clause is the one which is embedded, inserted within a sentence after the noun it modifies. However, its information is not essential to its noun. Let's look at the example that we have here. Bill Gates is the founder of Microsoft. This on its own can stand alone. Now we can introduce additional information about Bill Gates which does not have to restrict our noun. Again, since we're trying to modify the subject, the restrictive clause will come right after the subject. We can add something like this. Who is an American billionaire? So our embedded version becomes Bill Gates, who is an American billionaire, is the founder of Microsoft. As you noticed, I made slight pauses in my speech. And in writing, we accomplish this by using commas between the, the noun we're trying to modify and the relative clause. And we also try to make pauses in our speech. This is not something we did for our restrictive clause. So rule applies here that we must separate our non-restrictive subject relative clause with commas. So let's look at our previous example about Bill Gates one more time. Bill Gates, who is an American billionaire, is the founder of Microsoft. You notice I made slight pauses in my speech because that's how we 
offset our non-restrictive subject relative clause in speech. In writing, we show that by commas. So right after my subject, Bill Gates, I put comma to let my reader know that I'm going to introduce non-restrictive relative clause, and in this case, subject uh, relative clause, and this who is my new subject in this relative clause, which goes back to my original subject, Bill Gates. So that's why you don't have to put here who he, although some languages actually allow for that. In English, this who is my new subject in this relative clause, and it's offset by commas, which signals its non-restrictive subject relative clause. So who is an American billionaire is just extra information that we know about Bill Gates, but it's not essential information. This who is an American billionaire does not restrict Bill Gates, our subject, in any case. Now let's look at the wrong versions. Bill Gates, comma, that is an American billionaire, is the founder of Microsoft. As you can recall, maybe a few, two or three slides earlier, I explicitly mentioned that you cannot use that in non-restrictive subject relative clause. This is only doable to be used for people in restrictive relative clause. I believe we had examples something like people that exercise, that's doable for the restrictive because we're only talking about the people that exercise or people who exercise. Both are grammatically correct. In non-restrictive subject relative clause, that is not applicable. At the same time, which, Bill Gates, which is an American billionaire, is also not acceptable because which can only be used for objects, no exceptions. Finally, Let's summarize the differences between restrictive and non-restrictive relative clauses. So restrictive relative clauses keep in mind that they have to provide essential information to the noun or your noun phrase or the subject that you're trying to modify. There are no commas offsetting the restrictive relative subject clause. You can interchangeably use who and that for people and you can use which for things. Regarding the non-restrictive relative subject clauses, they don't provide essential information to the noun they modified. Rather, it's just something extra. We offset the non-restrictive relative subject clauses by commas in writing and special pause and lower pitch in speaking. We can never use that in the non-restrictive relative subject clause. We can only use who for people and which for things. So let's look at the example here. My friend who is a respiratory nurse practitioner has three children. This is clearly a restrictive relative subject clause. My friend who is a respiratory nurse practitioner. So I'm restricting that among all of the friends that I have, the one that is a respiratory nurse practitioner has three children. I can also offset and start a non-restrictive relative subject clause by saying the same thing in a different way. My friend, who is a respiratory nurse practitioner, has three children. As you noticed, I slightly paused to introduce the comma, and then I lowered my pitch slightly just to show you guys that I'm going to talk about non-restrictive relative subject clause. These two sentences carry two different meanings. This one, I'm just selecting, limiting, restricting my friend who is a respiratory nurse out of all friends that I have has three children. In non-restrictive relative subject clause, I'm merely saying my friend who is, by the way, a respiratory nurse practitioner has three children. My focus is on my friend having three children children. Now you try. Let's see if you guys can make your own subject restrictive relative clause. Here I've given you selective information. Let's see if you can fill in the blanks. The runners, blank, were exhausted. Which runners? So you want to ask yourself what kind of essential, defining, restricting information 
I could embed right after my noun phrase, my subject here, the runners, to make this restrictive relative clause. After I thought about it for a little bit, I came up with this, who reached their finish line. So the whole thing sounds like this. The runners who reached their finish line were exhausted. So this who relative pronoun refers back to my word runners, my noun phrase, my subject. This is the noun phrase I'm trying to modify. And who is also a new subject in my restrictive relative clause. By saying this, I'm trying to give a meaning that only the runners who reached their finish line were exhausted. At the same time, I'm implying that there were so many other runners participating in this race too. However, only the ones who reached their finish line were exhausted. And this is what makes my clause subject restrictive relative clause. Now, I can also say the same thing, but using different means of saying and different means of writing to portray different meaning. So subject non-restrictive relative clause would sound like this. The runners who reached their finish line were exhausted. So in this case, I offset my subject non-restrictive relative clause with commas right after the same noun phrase I'm trying to modify. I give extra information and then I close it with second comma and I'm saying we're exhausted. So I'm saying the runners were exhausted. The runners who, by the way, reached their finish line so this is not really essential information for me in this case. Let's see if you guys can practice on your own. So pick a subject, pick a noun phrase, any kind of noun phrase, and see if you can modify it. See if you can provide some essential and some not so essential information, and if you can come up with your own subject restrictive relative clause or subject non-restrictive relative clause. And let me know in comments. If you benefited from this video, please do like and share so other people can benefit as well. Also, stay tuned for our next video about relative clauses with object pronouns. Thanks for watching!